Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff again. Now that we've learned about systems of equations and what we mean by solutions of systems of equations, and we've looked at a couple of different methods for solving systems, namely the substitution method and the elimination method, I want to introduce some very special terms that describe types of systems. Now we're going to begin by just working one more example of solving a system of equations that will come out with no surprises. Let's look at this one, and I have the freedom to choose whichever method of solving this system that I would like to use because I see that it would be very easy to solve one of the equations for either x or y, I think I'm going to use the substitution method. And I believe I'll take the top equation and I'll solve that equation for x, which would be very, very simple. I can subtract 2y from both sides and get x is equal to negative 2y plus 6. Then taking that and substituting it into the second equation, I will replace the x by negative 2y plus 6, and then I will still have minus y equals 11, and we will solve this now equation in one variable by distributing out the 3, so we'll have negative 6y plus 18 minus y equals 11. Combine like terms, negative 7y plus 18. Now we're going to want to get that negative 7y by itself, so let's subtract 18 from both sides. This will give me negative 7y equals negative 7. And finally, divide both sides by negative 7. And we will have y equal 1. Now, that gets me one of the values for my ordered pair that I'm going to need. To find the other one, we can substitute back in. The easiest place to look is the equation that I had solved for x, because I can easily take that equation and now substitute in the value of y that I know. And this will give me x is equal to negative 2 plus 6, or x is equal to 4. And the solution as an ordered pair, and then even furthermore written as a solution set containing that ordered pair, would be the set containing the ordered pair 4, 1. Now, nothing particularly new there, but what I want to notice is that in all of that work, it turns out that this system of equation has one solution. We do all this work and we realize that the system has one solution. We're going to give a special name to a system of equations that has one solution. We're going to call that an independent system. And if you think about, every system of equations we've solved so far has been independent. It has come up with one solution, and that is the case here. But guess what? That does not always happen. Let's look at something else. This looks completely innocent, like just another system of equations. But let's see if we can solve this, and I want to notice something very strange. So in this case, I see that it would be not so easy to solve for either x or y because I'd have to divide and end up with fractions. But an elimination method might be easy. I would like the coefficients of either the x or the y to be the same in absolute value but opposite in sign. And one way that we could do that is if we were to multiply the top equation by a negative 2, again on the left and the right, to keep it balanced. The result of that would be that we would have negative 6x plus 4y equals negative 10. And the second equation would be 6x minus 4y equals 7. And this way we see that the coefficients of the x uh, terms 
are the same in absolute value but opposite in sign. And guess what? That's true of the y's as well. So look at what happens when we add these two equations together. The negative 6x plus 6x gives me 0. The 4y minus 4y gives me 0. Everything on the left side gives me 0. And on the right side, I have negative 10 plus 7. And that gives me negative 3. Now, something very strange here has happened. All of the variables went away. And I've come up with a statement that I want to analyze. This is telling me that 0 is equal to negative 3. Is that true? No, that's false. If all of your variable terms add out to 0 and you end up with a false statement, what that means is that this system of equations has no solution, which is very, very interesting. Um, a system that has no solutions, we're going to call inconsistent. If a system has no solutions, we call the system inconsistent. inconsistent. So that can happen. So that's a little bit of a twist. Is that going to happen very often? Not as often as getting a, an independent system. Let's look at another one. So mm, substitution, uh, elimination, either is fine. Um, I might multiply the top equation by negative 2 on both sides. I'm thinking of getting the x coefficients to be uh, opposite in sign, but equal in absolute value. So my system of equations becomes negative 8x plus 2y equals negative 6. 8x minus 2y equals 6 is my other equation. And I add these two equations together, and we re recognize again that everything on the left, all the x terms add to zero, the y terms add to zero, you just get a zero. And on the right term, you also get a zero. So again, all the variables disappear. But this is not the same thing as what happened in the previous example. In the previous example, we ended up with a statement that's false. In this uh, system, we end up with a statement that is true. So this is always true. Now, what does that mean? If, you, if, you, if all the variable terms go away and you end up with a true statement, what that means is that there are infinitely many solutions. Now, it doesn't mean that all ordered pairs are solutions just that infinitely many of them are. And what we can see if we really look at the work we've done here is when, by multiplying both sides of that first equation by negative 2, we really realize that we've got the same equation so that any ordered pair that makes this equation true uh, will work. And that's, there's going to be infinitely many of them. How do we represent that? How do we represent that? Well, here's one way. There's actually many ways to describe which inf of the infinite, infinitely many solutions are valid. But here is what our book recommends. Our book recommends take one of the equations, because they actually are equivalent, and solve it for x. So let's say we take the original equation, the original first equation, and talk about what it means to solve it for x. So that would look like this. I want to get the x term by itself, so I would need to add y to both sides. Again, that keeps it nice and balanced, totally legal. That gets rid of the y on the left side. So I have 4x equal 3 plus y, and I do want the x completely by itself, 
So if I divided both, both sides by 4, that would do it. And on this side, left side, the 4s divide out for sure. The right side looks like this. It's just going to be a little equation expressing x in terms of y. And the book would like you to write this answer in this very unusual form. So we're still going to represent an ordered pair and a uh, solution set of an ordered pair. Where the x is, I'm going to write this little expression that I came up with. And where the y is, I'm just going to put a y. Now, that looks incredibly odd, but what that does for you is it tells you how you could generate some of those infinitely many solutions that we're talking about. What you do is this. Pick any number you like for the y. So let's say, for example, we pick that we want the y to be 1. If you plug 1 into the expression for x, you will realize that one of the infinitely many ordered pairs that would work here is 4 over 4 or 1, 1. That's an ordered pair that would work. Pick any other number you want for y. Let's say, we'll put it up here. Let's say you pick y equal uh, 5, let's say. Plug 5 into the little expression. 3 plus 5 is 8 over 4, and that's 2. So that's a couple of the infinitely many solutions that make this system of equations true. And we could generate as many as you want. And you can see that every time you pick a y, you get a different value for x, and that would give you infinitely many solutions. Since our other kinds of systems have names, it would be awfully nice if this one also had a name. So going back a little bit, if there was one solution, we call it an independent system. If there are no solutions, we call it an inconsistent system. If there's infinitely many solutions, we call it a dependent system. And that is the strangest of all, because you have to find this way of representing what the infinitely many solutions are. Summarizing the three types of solutions that we have, if you have a system of equations with one solution, it is called an independent system. If you have a system of equations with no solutions, it's called an inconsistent system. And if you have a system of equations with infinitely many solutions, it's called a dependent system. And that brings us to the end of our basic study of solving systems of equations.